Hello Automators, welcome to our unboxing and review video for all the latest and greatest smart home products. This month's video features a pretty incredible lineup and we even have a giveaway. So let's get right into it. This month's video will jump around your house quite a bit as we have everything from outdoor products to entertainment products to core smart home and automation products that have been updated. Now the time codes are all below for all the different products but you'll want to stay to the end because that cooking device is something else. Let's kick off this one with a bag. It's the Govi AI sync box kit okay govi's come a long ways in just the last couple of years and i'm really excited to showcase this one in case you haven't noticed you get a little join govi here's a user manual here's a quick start guide and then you're right into this now here's the box this is the main controller for the whole thing there's one out hdmi port and then there's two outs on USB-C. Then there's three inputs on HDMI and a power input. Plus on the front, well, we get to do the sounds of tech. Yeah, there's two buttons. In the words of Zap Brannigan, It's real velour. Anyways, it's a luxurious package that we have here. That's what you said. These are also very, like, there's lightsabers here. It's kind of fun. These components are feeling really high quality. Two HDMI cables. Why? One in, one out? Yeah, probably, eh? That? Yeah. Okay. Wait! Is this a LED strip? I didn't know this was coming with. This is an LED strip, my goodness. Okay, so it's gonna go on a certain size of screen. So I can tell already, you know, this is for the up down, the vertical segments on your monitor. And then this is for those horizontal segments. This makes it really easy to get around the corners. This is such a smart idea from Govi. Now what that does is it limits the monitor size that you can have. And yeah, there are limits to this. So these, these are clearly my stands for these. There you go. That's the stand. It's just going on like this. I've got sticky tape. I'm betting I could put a couple of screws through that. And if I had to bet, the screws are in the package already. They've got some good uh, rubber pads on the bottom, the sticky feet. Man, there's a lot of stuff in here. A couple of screws right there. Well, actually quite a few. Here's our power adapter. Not much to this, not much different than uh, what we come to expect from Govi and their products. There's some alcohol prep pads because to get this on the back of your monitor, you wanna clean it up a little bit. I don't know about you, but sometimes my office gets a little dusty. And then these, these hold the strip onto the back really well. So we get a screwdriver and that's the end of what we get. Did a little reading here. I've uncovered a couple of things. So this is just the power button, the one with the two circles. And then the one with just a circle is actually the input switcher for the different sources. Now, I gotta understand exactly how this is gonna work in terms of things like set-top boxes or other video sources. Like, does this become just like a Govi T2 backlight and I can use gaming consoles and other things? That would become like a dream kid setup in my mind, right there. I could imagine how excited my kid is going to be when he sees this. Now the question is, am I going to be that nice to him? So let's go. I'm going to install this in my office. And if I ever want to, I'll just switch a monitors because we have the same monitor. This product has a really long name, but it has an even longer feature list and it executes on all those features at a really high level. It's expensive, but honestly, it might just be worth it. This is especially true to gamers who play Apex Legends, Fortnite, or any of the other games on this list. Then what you'll experience is not just lighting that synchronizes to what's on the screen, but you also experience these effects that are specific to each game. And I did not expect to find the effects useful, but some of them are. A great example is when you heal a teammate. The bar actually kind of fills up on the LED strip 
And so you have this visual notification of when that's finished. Now lots of the other effects are fun and exciting and truly do improve gameplay. And that's before we talk about this having a music synchronization feature, a video synchronization feature, the ability to color each segment of both the light strip and the two, what I call lightsabers independently. All of the scene effects that you've come to know and love from Govi are here too, and their massive library of user created effects. And that's not all. The gaming box will allow you to connect up to three HDMI sources and switch between them with the app or with the button on the box. You can synchronize this with other Govi products too using the music, video, or basic scenic DreamView features just like any other Govi product today. You can turn off the light stands, the LED strip, or you can leave them all on and the box itself shows the color pattern being created on its own little LED strip. And I didn't expect any of this to work with my setup because I kind of have a corner setup with a window, but this is bright, vibrant, and it's all the great colors that we've come to expect from Govi. It's a completely unique lighting experience. It's something I will be keeping for myself and I cannot wait for the next version that allows even bigger screens and more video games getting specialized effects. Those are the only two gaps here because if you don't have any of those games then you don't get the specialized AI effects. And if you have a screen bigger than 34 inches then it's not gonna work with the LED strip. Otherwise, this was easy to install with all the professionalism that Govi has brought to light strips. The equipment is high quality and it's working flawlessly. So if you have a gamer in your household and they play some of those games, this is the absolute perfect gift. Now if you'll excuse me, I got some more noobs to pwn. No! Look at this thing! This is kind of a secret device. SwitchBot hasn't mentioned this to many people. And I was pushing them on the hub too and I found out they were gonna release this indoor slash outdoor thermal hygrometer, which means you're gonna be able to measure outdoor temperature and humidity. That might not on the surface seem all that great, but I know a lot of you are looking for uh, little weather devices outdoors. Here's what you get in the box, pretty short and sweet. Now you get a little card to get some help, you get a little manual, you get a little, I don't know, wrist strap, and you get the sensor itself. Now the sensor has a little hole for that wrist strap, and then I think we can open up this compartment and see what kind of batteries we got inside. Couple of AA batteries in there, and as soon as I pull those tabs, we're gonna get the thing booting up. And one of the great things about SwitchBot now is how fast it sets up. Now, one of the reasons I'm excited about this is because of how it pairs with SwitchBot's new hub. So this is an outdoor temperature and humidity sensor and the SwitchBot Hub 2 has a temperature and a humidity sensor. You're gonna be able to switch this to use this sensor's data on the interface. Now that is really moving this into a bit of a display in your home, a little bit different than anything else we have like this. I'm just gonna hit the plus right now. I've got this thing booting up. It's in the app. So you can see it's in the app. It says outdoor meter right there. Now it says, go ahead and add the product. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, I can. Gotta press the button for two seconds. There, there we go. Instantly connected when I did that properly, when I followed instructions. So all I've had to do is name the device. I just left it as outdoor meter. I'm hitting next. Bingo, connecting the device. I can see temperature, I can see humidity. I'm gonna turn on cloud services and I'm gonna connect it to the hub too instantly. We're gonna see where we go from here. So let me show you how this works. When I first reviewed the Hub 2 from SwitchBot, on the release date of that video, the company was supposed to release a firmware update for this little sensor that would allow it to display on that Hub's screen. 
Now that took a lot more time than it was supposed to, and I don't know what the delays were about, but it was worth it to wait for this one to come out. Now my hub can display either the indoor or the outdoor temperature, and this little sensor actually provides a lot of different measurements. There's a dew point, a vapor pressure deficit, and the standard temperature and relative humidity measurements. There's also a really interesting absolute humidity measurement and this is all being sent to the app on a very regular basis so you actually have really good data there's also explanations in case you don't know what those other measurements are because i didn't at first either now you can export that data and you can use it in other ways then but inside of the switchbot app you can use any of the five measurements being higher or lower than a specific threshold to start automations with your switchbot system because most of the other platforms can't use anything other than temperature or humidity, you're not gonna find a lot of use for this sensor in those other platforms, but you can do little tricks like using a SwitchBot plug to drive automations in other platforms based on those other sensors. So what you would do is you would turn on a smart plug that you weren't using for any other uses, and that would drive automations in Amazon or Google. But you can also set alert set points for all of those different sensors. And it all appears to be really accurate versus some other sensors that I have around my home. Overall, this is an inexpensive option to provide automation features in the great outdoors. But in the future, I am hoping those other sensors as well as other automation options come to this sensor so that we can do great things in platforms like SmartThings. <laughs> There we go. This is the Enclave Eclipse 5.1.2 soundbar, and there's actually uh, a sub in this as well. This is a tricky one. There we go, there she's coming out. And I tell you, this is a pretty serious soundbar. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna show you a bunch of the connections. There's a coax, there's an optical, uh, there is USB, an auxiliary, and one of the reasons that I went after this, there's three HDMI ports, but one of them is an HDMI out that is an eARC port. And this can be very important for those of you with a smart home with a number of streaming devices and a number of game systems. That's a big help. So I thought I'd get everything out of the box, show you some of the things on the soundbar itself, and then show you what we get. Look, we got Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, there's your power port, uh, and you can read some of the specs there. Nothing too crazy going on here, but we also get four buttons on this thing. So obviously these are gonna be volumes. I believe this will be an input switcher button, and then we've got power on. The construction's really nice. There's a little bit of branding here at the one end, but other than that, very, very clean look. It's got little feet on it, there you go. 11 different speakers on this. But on top of that, you're also getting a sub. You're getting a little user manual here. Nothing too substantial, so I don't think setup is gonna be too difficult with this one. So then we have a wall mounting kit for this, which is a really nice inclusion to have in the box. You've got your, your ports there, um, or where you're gonna screw into the wall and they did give us the hardware for this whole thing. Then we've got an HDMI cable, two power cables, one for the sub, one for the power bar because you can locate the sub somewhere else because it's all wireless. It's a pretty unassuming remote and it is IR. Full disclosure, I am not a home theater reviewer. So when I work with a sound bar, I'm not gonna be able to compare it to hundreds of others that I've tested. But I can tell you that this sounds much better than any set of Echo Studios or Apple HomePods that I've put in my home. I've been in your house for 15 years. It is clearly an upgrade in both sound quality and volume over the best smart speakers available today. In fact, it's so loud that I couldn't get over volume 14 out of 31 levels. Other soundbars that I have worked with just haven't had the depth in EQ and in surround sound. 
This truly does change how it sounds drastically whenever you're going between a movie mode to a voice mode or a music mode. They labeled him a national asset, him to a government dormitory with a handler to protect him from spies and IP theft. And speaking of music, you can play that through the USB slot or through Bluetooth. Yeah. And right here. Paired. And then. Now multiple times I was cooking in my kitchen and listening to the show playing on the television and I would catch myself looking back because the voices had changed perspective so much that it shocked me. The surround sound truly made it feel like the voices were behind me or they were at least far away on the show. And all of this I'm talking about with a low level of Netflix subscription. So that's before we talk about Dolby's higher sound quality options that you get with this. Once I added that in, it was an entirely different experience again, but I was impressed with just the base level subscriptions and how this soundbar somehow turned regular content into very dynamic sounds. The other thing that I was so impressed with was the night EQ mode because it eliminated all of the bass that was coming off of the soundbar and the subwoofer. It allowed me to listen at higher volume levels even in the evenings without disturbing neighbors. And for those of you that have trouble hearing content because of the overbearing bass or too high of volume soundtracks, this has a voice mode that tones down everything but the voices in your show. But there are two reasons I think a lot of you could use a soundbar versus some of your smart speakers. The first is reliability because no matter what I plugged in, whether it was a game console or a streaming device or even sending music over Bluetooth, this worked every time and I never had to think about Wi-Fi dropping out or a speaker problem. The other reason is the eARC port, which I have referred to a few times as being important. Now, it's important that your television also has an ARC or eARC port because what happens is you connect those two ports together and then you never have to touch the input button or the remote that comes with this device to change sources and your soundbar just turns on with your television. Then the soundbar just seamlessly switches between all of the different content you have on your television. You don't really need that remote. You could also program a number of IR smart blasters like SwitchBot's Hub 2 to control anything in that soundbar in the smart home way. Of course you can use the other two HDMI ports on this soundbar and that essentially gives you an extra two ports from what your television already has. The one drawback to using those two ports is you will need that remote around to switch between them. Otherwise, this is a fantastic soundbar that will fit a lot of homes and will have very few drawbacks. In a smart home, this is a great complementary device. Now if you like this product and you want to win one, then check out the link below where you can go and enter into our giveaway. I have to thank Enclave for allowing us to give away one of these. Unfortunately for those of you who aren't in the US or Canada, you won't be able to win this one, but come back next month and I'm sure I'll be able to do something for you. It is the Akara Smart Lock U100. Now, if you don't know about this one, this is one of the big four releases that Akara is making this year. We've already seen the FP2 presence sensor, which I was mostly impressed with. I know some people have struggled. That's why I made the video I did that explained how to work with that device. But in general, people are loving that one, what they can do with it. Now, this has some different features for you. It's got a fingerprint reader on it. It's Apple Home and HomeKey supported. That's because Akara always makes their products work with Apple HomeKit, one of the best systems to pair there. Uh, auto lock and always open mode. Eight months of battery life is a long time and remote passwords unlock and they're saying easy install. But I'll be the judge of that, Akara. Zigbee, Bluetooth 5.0 and NFC. It's a good set of connectivity standards to use with a smart door lock. I really like that. Getting into the packaging, there's a little measuring guide here. Now, I'm actually having a small door just built for me here. So I'm hoping that's ready right away. I got a little manual. There we go. And... Now we can have a look at the door lock itself. 
yeah that's looking pretty neat okay this looks feels it is the uh akara video doorbell g4 like that that's what that thing is quite wide got that same form factor uh maybe a little bit wider i would call it a little bit wider and uh otherwise it's got that same color and i i actually really like that color the other piece here which is actually going to sit on the outside this is hefty this is really heavy uh i'm blown away by that that's the only thing i can think of oh oh and the the base plate move look look what i found <laughs> that's pretty neat okay so that should mean i have keys in here too which does mean you're replacing your front door key and that can be a little bit tricky for some people all right inside of box number one we have the funniest looking tool i have ever seen that's what she said four AA batteries well that's actually to replace part of your your door lock mechanism so there's actually all of those there's your bolts this is a full reinstallation a full redo of your existing door lock that's important to keep in mind there's other types of door locks right there's our new keys now you gotta like the new keys you're getting you got all the hardware here so that's your inset here's your plate on the edge of that and here is our deadbolt you've got everything you're gonna need here doesn't look too complex either but let's get back to this bad boy now the way in the end this is gonna go I can tell okay kind of got that that deal going on now a couple of things to note with this I'm not seeing uh, like a wear out on the pad happening here this looks pretty good and I'm not seeing it leaving marks instantly when you're touching it there's also a lock button here and there is that this pad on the back is just sticking here so uh, I noticed that there is an adhesive on the other side of this obviously that's not going to matter once you get this installed and I'm assuming that's the same thing over here there's a lot surprising about this smart lock not the least of which is how easy it was to install I had a quote unquote little door built to start installing these kinds of locks on it and I was able to install this in about 10 minutes. The finish, the look and the feel of this lock is really nice. I love that I have the exact same color as my G4 video doorbell and the two of these will make a very nice pair. The keypad's easy to use and the fingerprint scanner is excellent. Both of them respond really well to touch and there doesn't seem to be any residual marks on the keypad after I've touched it. So. It's going to be hard for other people to figure out your codes. The battery life seems really good because I moved this lock hundreds of times during my testing and it really hasn't moved the battery. I don't love trying to get into this in order to install the four batteries, but otherwise everything from that physical standpoint seems really great. And the IP65 rating plus the temperature ratings should get this working in a lot of places around the world. But I obviously couldn't test this in the winter in Canada and I do worry a little bit about the sliding key compartment freezing up in Canadian winters. The integration with Amazon is great with voice and app control. Apple HomeKit is fantastic with the same features. And both apps can run automations that lock the device, plus both can run automations that are based on the status of the lock. Akara knows that they have issues with Google Home and I've been unable to control the lock through that app or the Google Assistant. So that should come, but it's not available today. And Matter allowed me to put this into Apple HomeKit through the Acara M2 hub. That hub is running on the beta that's available today, but from my testing, that has been plenty good. Other platforms can't use the Matter bridge today, so there's no smart things integration or anything else really, because Matter bridges like the M2 hub aren't yet being used by those apps. There are a ton of options for control and configuration, so my list 
here isn't an exhaustive one, but there are a few important ones to tell you about. The alerts are comprehensive and allow you to know when the door has been left unlocked or when someone's tried to enter your home multiple times and failed. You can automatically lock your door after a set time and there's even a secret code of 00 plus the lock button to stop the door from automatically locking behind you. Away mode notifies you when the lock moves and you're away and do not disturb mode turns off all the sounds you normally hear. But again, Akara shines when it comes to the automations available within their app. Most of the features will require Bluetooth connectivity to program into the lock, but you'll want to bind this with one of Akara Zigbee hubs in order to get all of these automation features and that pairing with the other voice assistant systems. But those automation options are really unique again. This keeps happening with Akara products and I love that I can change the automations based on how the lock was moved. It senses whether or not it was a temporary passcode or a permanent one, whether it was a fingerprint or Bluetooth on the phone or from the outside or from the inside. It can run automations if it was unlocked with Amazon or Google and it can run different automations on a number of the modes that it has and based on those things you can turn on the away mode or the do not disturb mode you can lock the device now I'm not done with this one as we're looking at producing a full review for it because it's one of the most fully featured smart locks yet so stay tuned to the channel as we'll be showing you everything about this lock very soon you might have noticed that there was a door there and actually later in today's video you're gonna see that I have some light switches and outlets that I've built. The fact is too much of this stuff goes on my home and I was feeling a little bit limited in terms of being able to install things in a rental. So I'm starting to have these things built by local contractors and although the door is way too large and I had to do some very terrible modifications to it, these have been really helpful because They've actually allowed me to move things like the light switches around and test how their connectivity performs. So I'm going to continue building these kinds of boxes so we can do more like this. I have something tucked away in here that I think is going to pop off the press. Let's check it out. This is the brand new Echo Pop from Amazon. Now, this is not necessarily a device that I think is gonna blow you away in audio quality, but it is a smart speaker, which means it has Amazon's voice assistant on board, and it also can play music and podcasts and other content like that. Looking at this thing, uh, this is quite a different color. I did not expect the dark level of this. Yeah, wow. That is really, really different. The other thing is we have these changes to the design that some people are gonna like, some people aren't gonna love. There's no 3.5 millimeter jack on the back of this. This is just a power cable. We haven't seen that in most Echo speakers in a little bit. That's not there, you're not gonna have that option. The light ring that we're used to being on the bottom of most Amazon speakers, is now on the top and it's much smaller than it was. Uh, there are three visible microphone ports because the whole thing isn't covered by cloth. And again, you know, you look at the Echo Dot, well, there's a lot of cloth covering on that. It's only the bottom here. But what I am instantly really liking is how clean the front of that can look. So, you know, if you're just sticking that in a corner somewhere, corner of your corner table at the very back. You're not going to see a lot and the cable I think is going to be tucked away fairly well. I like the stand. It's uh, it's angling this speaker in a very nice way and I could see this design expanding further out and maybe not being so many globe ball speakers. Uh, maybe ending up with more of these in the corner of homes at a larger size. You get a few more things in the box. A couple of manuals. These things I never really look at. I don't know if you do, but I don't. And a 15, yeah, 15 watt power supply. It looks exactly the same as your Echo Dot, your Echo Show 5s. Very, very similar to what we get there. 
We're all connected. This is ready to go. And uh, that's, that's an impressive thing, actually. So this is something that if you kind of know the credentials in your parents' house, you could send them one of these. Uh, you just gotta buy it under their account, make sure everything's connected, and then send them one. It's actually not that hard. The Amazon Echo Pop is a tiny speaker, and it's not going to be mind-blowing for any of you with its feature set. But this is a $40 smart speaker, and if we had received this just a few years ago, it would have sold millions and cornered the market. Google Home wouldn't exist at all if this came out instead of the third generation Echo Dot. So while this isn't a groundbreaking speaker, and it's certainly not gonna break any sales records in 2023, it is a relatively nice design, relatively good sounding for the price. It controls smart homes the same way much more expensive Amazon speakers do, and so much more. That makes it a great entry level speaker. I think Amazon's done a great job at hiding this speaker behind the scenes. They've thought out the design really well for homes and then they gave it some color to make sure it would fit a bunch of different situations. Now I won't recommend this speaker to experienced automators like yourselves because there's nothing new except the way it looks. However, if you're just dipping your toes into the waters of home automation, then this is actually where I will tell most people to go because it does 99% of what every other Amazon smart speaker does. Now, if you wanna find out the details about that, then watch our full review of the Echo Pop through the links below or on screen now. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this is pretty neat. This is the Eve Flare. Now this is a new generation of a portable smart LED lamp. Now this version is a thread device with a promised upgrade to matter in the future. And actually I've been talking to uh, the folks over at Eve pretty regularly. And one of the hangups always with their products is that you don't have an Android application. You can't get it into Google. You can't get it into Amazon. Smart things, all those systems. But now that we're talking about matter with thread coming to this device, we can get it just about everywhere. <laughs> just the physical nature of this thing is what I'm blown away by. So this is a 10 inch, I believe that diameter, essentially a smart globe. Holy smokes, look at this thing. Look at that. I, 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 it has a uh, wireless charging on it. I did not know that. Look at that. Okay, so that must mean if I dig in over here, look at that. Wireless charging right there. Also on the bottom, you know, you've got another home kit code here. There's a mode and a power. Now this has a battery in it. They say it's long lasting. I don't know if it's gonna be long lasting. What would you, what do you call that? Uh, it's got some texture on it. So it's not completely smooth, um, but you can't, you don't really notice until you pick up that it's got that little bit of texture. Uh, okay, that's, I mean, there's not much to that. So if you wanted to set this as a fixture all the time, there you go. Now there's a little, like a, a hook here that I think is gonna, pop out yeah i think that's like a hanging hook i need the right power adapter i've got four in the box and with the power adapter here uh, eve is giving you the opportunity to switch between them all you also get for the third time in this package that home kit code this doesn't actually have a power port on it they were thinking the the feet on the bottom allow us to get that cable out. You could go in pretty much any direction. You can get this under without making the, the mount tippy or move. Uh, so you can hide a lot of that cable. The other thing, you know, with this stand and with the ability to kind of hide that cable under the stand in a lot of cases, and even around the base here, uh, these could be exceptionally good beside a bed, a pair of these. I think could look really, really nice. Smart lighting has really exploded this year with all kinds of new and fancy lighting effects on top of new form factors. But the Eve Flare has come out and now works with thread. 
That means it's on the path to matter over thread, as we've seen Eve do with some of their other products. And it also means that it's much more reliable than the Wi-Fi version. Now, not only have I experienced perfection when it comes to reliability with Eve Flare, but I have taken this thing all over my house and even taken it outside. It stayed connected and I've been able to control it either through the Apple Home app or through Apple's voice control. I can add it to all of the automations in the Home app and I can pick and choose the colors. So it's not an overly complicated smart light and I would even say that it is so simple from an effect standpoint that some people will feel disappointed. That is until they look at it. It's gorgeous and it doesn't need the effects. It's also made of the right material to be a really soft ambient background light and with that battery base you can take it wherever you want once it's run out of battery which did happen after a couple of days of being off the charger with general use you'll have to take it back and sit it on the charger which is also a nice touch my only complaint would be that I want more of this from Eve I want more versions with different sizes and I want the ability to change colors dynamically when it's on the charger but otherwise when Eve gives us either matter compatibility or an Android application later this year this is one of the best smart home lights because it's completely enjoyable and it can fit every home I really enjoy making these videos and we put a lot of effort into them but one of the original points of these was that I get a little more out there personally and you get a little bit more of who I am instead of what I'd call the professional version of Brian. But what I found is that as soon as I toned down the amount of information from our other regular videos, I had a lot of people telling me that it wasn't what they came to automate your life for. They came for the information and this has caused us to create what are essentially eight minute reviews of nine to ten products every month and jam them into this video. It's so much effort that there's moments where I think we're putting too much into this one video and not getting enough out of it. But this has had an additive effect of bringing in a lot more products and that lets me test more. I feel like every month I'm getting a little bit better at understanding what these offerings are that are being made to us as consumers and what the good and bad ones are. So I do want to keep going with it. And one of the things that this did that I didn't expect is it brought both Amazon and even Samsung to send us products this month. Now Samsung's never sent me anything until they sent this station right here. Now here's the funny thing. I had already bought the station because they took over six months to send it. So I have an extra smart thing station and maybe we should give that away next month? What do you guys think? I don't know what's in this one. I'm hoping it's exciting. Let's find out together. This is one of the biggest launches this year for those of you with Samsung SmartThings. It's the SmartThings station. This is the brand new hub from Samsung. Now, the big thing here is that this is a wireless charging device. So you can set phones on top of that and it's a SmartThings hub. Now I'm gonna get this set up in a moment, but there's a few things you need to know about this hub. Number one, it doesn't have Z-Wave on it. So it's got Zigbee, Thread, Matter, Wi-Fi, uh, and it doesn't have Ethernet on it. So, you know, in a lot of cases, I would suggest to you that it's important that your smart home hub, or at least the primary one, is connected directly to your Ethernet network. The other thing that you're going to want to note here, okay, we've got the button. This is going to allow us to start routines in a number of ways. That's a really great feature. The other thing that's important to note is that a lot of this, a lot of the greatness of this hub is tied to having a Galaxy phone. I don't have a Galaxy phone. So I'm gonna be missing things like Smart Things Find or a lot of the features around that. Now the fact is Samsung stopped making Smart Things gear a while ago and allowed AOTech to sell their smart home hub for them. So it was a bit of a shock that Samsung released the station with its wireless charger and push button features. The push button is effective for starting automations and I think one of these sitting beside you in the bedroom is a feature a lot of people are going to enjoy. You can start three different automations by doing a single press, 
double press or a hold on that button. You can also start automations based on something wirelessly charging and I was very happy to find out that it wasn't restricted to Samsung Galaxy devices charging on the station. Anything you charge can be used to start an automation and the good news is you can start an automation when you're done charging. The other piece of good news is that you can turn off the little lights on the side of the, the station and you can do that in an automated way so that the little lights are there during the day but go away in the evenings if it's beside your bed. And this has a Zigbee and a Thread radio plus it's a Matter controller. So from a future smart home perspective, this is ready. But there are some strange things that I've experienced with the station. For some weird reason, the charging feature is less powerful with any phone that isn't made by Samsung. And if you have a Google Pixel phone that can be wirelessly charged, then you will find it ridiculously slow. The other weird thing is that this doesn't have a Z-Wave radio on it. And I don't really understand Samsung abandoning that technology at this stage in the game but they are clearly done putting it in devices that they themselves are selling because it's not in the Zigbee dongle that they sell either. One of the other odd things is that the find phone or tablet option on this station will only work with Galaxy phones or tablets or other Galaxy devices to help you find those. Now, that's strange because it's really just a Bluetooth network and all the hardware's here, so that's a funny limitation. Otherwise, this appears to be a new smart home hub and it works with all the new features that you're getting in Samsung SmartThings. But it's really a wireless charger that's gonna cost you a lot more than other wireless chargers. So if you're just starting out, this might be a good purchase, but for those of you who already have SmartThings in your home and you have a hub, these aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking. Here are some Wiz A19 smart light bulbs. They're the color version. Now, why would I get these? Number one, there's not a lot you're getting in this box here. So uh, we've got four A19 color bulbs. They feel really light. Now they are an 800 lumen bulb and there's not gonna be a lot to them initially. Let's get them. Woo! <laughs> I missed. Can't do two things at once. Now, uh, one of the interesting things about the Wiz app, I have that downloaded now. I'm going to hit add a product and I'm going to choose lights. But I didn't actually have to sign up for an account right off the bat. Now, there's uh, one little option here. This is quite interesting. It's a smart pairing or manual pairing. A smart pairing says it can do multiple at once. Now I've got two plugged in. Uh, it says power off, power on your lights, tap on start. So I more or less did that. I guess we'll see. Now it is doing a search for these two lights. Oh, I got two up here. What's it saying? Press finish once all your lights have been found. Yep, okay. Neat. Okay, there's actually some really neat things going on here. Okay, I just put them into what I think is a nightlight mode. There are all kinds of features here, like a quick tap on this. You can go from warm light to daylight to cool light. Uh, and then there's this nightlight mode, which is really quite excellent. It's very understated. There's a number of other effects. So this is plant growth. And, and you're seeing them, like they're both changing at the same time. Let's see how the color reproduction is. That's blue. It's definitely a nice blue. I think I gotta turn up the brightness here to see it fully. Yeah, that's accurate. Ooh, spring green, fresh speech green. I, <laughs> can I just have green? Bright green, let's see, chartreuse. Oh, just working on that. Yeah, that's a great bright green. Uh, orange red. Ooh, perfect orange red. I love that color. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, that's gonna be hard for me to truly show the brilliance of. I, I love it. So from a color reproduction and just a basic effect standpoint, really liking this app. There's also progressive like wake up and bedtime things, Christmas, Halloween. There's a ton of different dynamic effects. I gotta say I'm impressed with these Wi-Fi connected bulbs. Now, 
Earlier, I alluded to why I went and got these. Now, there's a couple of things that Wiz has done. Number one, these should get a matter update right away. If I don't already have an option to get that, I should be able to get that very soon. Number two, there is what's called Wiz Space Sense. Now, that means they should act as a presence sensor. Now that's something uh, I'm not seeing an instant update for or any settings for right now so I've got to do some exploration. But just from a settings standpoint and just out of the box there's a power outage recovery setting so you can make sure that they stay off after a power event. There's also just a huge number of integrations right off the hop. And then the lights themselves have some really interesting settings on them. So there's some favorite modes that you can set here, uh, one, two, three, four, and then those are favorites for the device. Right here, you can see this on fade in and off fade out. So those are allowing you to set transition time to on and off. This is the most interesting setting. So not only do I have this, what's called whiz click, and I'll explain that in a second, but I also have the last status. So if I was to turn off the light with, with the switch or unplug it, that it would just go to whatever it was before. So that's like a power on behavior. But this whiz click, okay, this is the first time I've seen a, a light bulb that could truly work with a light switch. Now, what I mean by that is you have two settings there. Switch on once for favorite light mode one. So that means whatever you set in there, when you turn on the bulb from an off switch, that could be a light switch in your home, then it will go to that mode. And if you quickly switch on twice for favorite mode two, that means you have a second setting here. Wiz has made some great looking Wi-Fi smart bulbs and most of their features pan out, but if you're looking for an absolutely perfect lighting system, this isn't it. And that's okay because the colors are great and the pricing is good. The effects and the themes you can create are really nice and I kind of wish I had bought more of these. But in order to get the space sense feature and I fear matter, you will need the second version of their app, which if you read reviews is clearly not as good as the first. It's a bit of a strange app to navigate and I much prefer the first version, but what's more important is how the bulbs work in your home. They are reliable, having stayed connected for well over a month now with no failures of control. Even when controlled through Google, Amazon, or SmartThings, the bulbs have a great response and I have many of the control options I would like, including the option to create scenes that synchronize with Google and Amazon. But the big point of these is the Space Sense feature, which you can only get in that second application. The feature started out really rough for me, but after some rearranging of where the bulbs were in my room, it started to work really reliably. And by the time I was into the middle of the room, my lights were all on. It's a bit of an odd scenario that makes these work though, as they appear to be sensing when you are in between the bulbs. So that's going to mean for a lot of you that you have to be in the room before this is going to sense your presence and turn on the bulbs. I think that will stop a lot of people from using these with Space Sense. Now I did like a lot of the settings and features that I had access to with these bulbs. And I think Signify, who owns both Philips Hue and this brand, have something going here, but they need to really work on this app and they really need to figure out Space Sense and how that works before you get into the room. Then I think I'd be willing to put a lot more of these bulbs in my home and a lot more of their products. I would get such nice notes now this is the second switch in kind of the new lineup from Lutron and Cassetta. It's called the Claro, and this is the simpler version of them. It has a single LED on the side. You can control whether that's on or off in the Lutron Cassetta app, and this will take a Lutron bridge. Now I like seeing on here, it's telling you the ratings on this physical plate. So it says five amps for lighting and three amps for things 
like fans. What I've really found great with the Diva in my home now is, you know, it's not a switch that physically moves other than just that little depress and then it kind of pops back. And that means I, I don't have to think about what state it's in from that smart home perspective. It doesn't matter. You can turn it on, you can turn it off with whatever system you're using to control your lighting throughout your home. And then if you want that manual press, there it is. This is probably more exciting than just the Claro. And the reason I think that is because I like colorful stuff. So here's a Diva, not like the ones you see on television, but they have the new black, it's finally ready. They kind of released last year with just the single color. Well now we've got gray, we've got black. This is another Diva, so that's a dimming switch. You know, one of the things I really like about these is you're not actually turning off the power at the switch. Uh, it's still going through this, so you can still control it in a smart way. Now, I will say, uh, the black is definitely showing a little bit more of like dust and things, so you might end up having to keep that one a little cleaner. But in general, I love the looks of these, and now I've got a whole bunch to put in my place. You get all the hardware you need with this one, and you get a pretty good manual. There you go, it's gonna walk you through it. But there's a QR code down here. You can go and, you know, I found it easiest to just sit on my phone and walk through step-by-step step the installation in my own home. You can kind of pick your situation, but they give you everything you need here with your accessories. Now, if you didn't see this whole lineup before, the Diva switches, they have this little dimming switch here, so you're able to move it up and down. And whenever, wherever you place that will be the base brightness level when you hit the button to turn it on, but then you can hit it again to turn it fully on to 100%. Now these have to work with regular dimmable bulbs and these have to work with regular bulbs. So they're not gonna work with your smart home bulbs or your smart bulbs from other systems. That's not possible here. But the Lutron system is one of the most reliable, if not the most reliable smart home lighting system. I had previously shown the Lutron Diva smart switch, which has a dimming capability. And now I've shown you the Claro, which is essentially an on off version of that smart switch. I think my biggest issue with Lutron and their lineup of switches is how much you have to fit into your wall. These come with all the wires attached to the switch and you're usually having to add wire nuts into your in-wall box. That makes it an incredibly tight fit, so much so that I had failed in a couple of locations with the Diva in the past, and I could see the same thing happening with the Claro. But otherwise, the new colors are gorgeous, and I think the gray is one of my favorite current choices for a smart switch. And I think a lot of people will look at the black for these switches, but I would caution that you will need to really make sure they don't get scratched because just like a car, everything shows up. So I love the new colors, but the really important thing is how do they work once they're in the wall? And I have never heard anyone complain about how a Lutron switch works. And you won't hear me do that today. It's perfect control and it works every time when you have the Lutron bridge in your home and you pair any of these switches with that. The integration options are endless and you'll find every major platform can work with these switches. I love the features that I have with the Diva in the app because I have the ability to trim off brightness levels if I don't think my bulb works well with a certain range. For example, the bulb I was using would flicker heavily before we got above 20% brightness. So I trimmed that off the range that the Diva switch could go, and that meant my lighting worked perfectly. Of course, all of these are gonna work with Pico remotes and other remotes that Lutron sells. So it all becomes one great happy family of a smart home with these switches. All right, here we go. Now, this is a heavy box. I'm actually really surprised with the Govi RGB ICWW cylinder floor lamp. Now, all those RGB IC, I'll explain what that means as we go, but this is a floor lamp from Govi. We saw this one actually at CES this year uh, as kind of the first reveal of that. So I'm excited to actually get one of these in my place show you what it's all about. 
All right, we get our little join Govi home card. Of course, we get a user manual, power adapter, very standard for these guys, although this one feels a little nicer than some of the previous uh, adapters. Now this has a controller component on it, really interesting. Okay, so we've got a button. It looks like a lighting indicator, but then look at that. That is very different. We've got three pieces of the actual lamp pole here, and they're all attached by the cable. So the cables already run through all of this. I got my nunchucks here. Now this is uh, this is very standard, um, you know, when I get down to the, the power cable here, you're just going straight into the adapter, so it's pretty standard stuff. This isn't like, it's not brushed, it's very smooth. Uh, it might have some nicks over time, I can't, I'm not making one as I do this, and I'm not scratching it, so it's a good coating there. And our lamp itself. Now I would assume that there's an LED strip in here because obviously that's what Govi's good at. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, oh, we're sticking. And there's the base. Now this is, this is heavy. This is serious. Uh, but what I do notice is your cable is going through the middle there. So that's really nice to see. That means you can hide things fairly well. Totally breaking rules here for sure. For sure, for sure. But I want to show you guys. Is this got a twist on? Yeah, it twists on. Okay. That looks nice. Uh, I have to do three more threads and then this is done. There's a lightsaber behind me. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, that is 7% brightness. Orange. It's perfect on this side. I know sometimes the color balance isn't quite right in here. Yellow, perfect. Green, blue. I, it's as I'm hitting these things too. So the response is really quick because Govi uses Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. When you're within range, you can control it through the app. Now you can move through all the different RGB colors. Really great. But the thing you always want with Govi are these different scenes. It's moving along, look at that. I mean, that's incredible. And this is what you get with every Govi light. I'm really loving their lighting products, guys. In case you haven't noticed, they work with Amazon, they work with Google. With Amazon, you get all of the access to uh, their scenes. So all these different effects you get access to. So you can ask Amazon, okay? Show me, you know, or put this in the Govi fire scene. You can use it in routines that way too. Uh, now, in terms of smart things and HomeKit users, right now you're not going to have an option for this specifically. But if you watch our smart LED strip comparison video, you'll see that Govi's moving in the way of matter, and then you do get some options there. Smart home aficionados like most of you will be wondering about automation options. Well, Govi's lamp features a scheduling function in their app, automation options that coordinate with other Govi products like their smart home sensors and other lights. And this specific version of the product can be used with Govi's API for deeper integration and land-based local smart home control. On top of that, this product works with Amazon and Google's voice assistant and their smart home apps. And with Amazon's voice assistant, within their routines feature, you can also access those, which means you can have a simple motion sensor turn on this lamp to any effect you'd like. This is the first smart lamp I'll be keeping long term in my home, and I'm excited to use it not just for its smart features, but also for basic lighting features. This one's not just a pretty lamp with fancy effects, although it is that. It's a useful lamp with a modern look that's well designed and could fit a lot of homes. This one's a total buy from me, so check out the links below to pick up one of these and start building out your Govi smart lighting system because it just gets better and better every launch. For as long as we've had a, an idea of a smart home, we've had smart lighting and there are so many smart lighting products out there today. And you just saw a whole bunch that are all pretty good. 
When I used to give recommendations for smart lighting, there was kind of one or two options that I know would work for just about everyone. But today I can go to five or six product lineups and say that they're gonna work in most situations and that's an exciting thing for all of us. But something that hasn't happened is, let's call it smartification when it comes to the kitchen. We just haven't had these small appliances show up and really make a difference. The fact is most things can live without an app and without voice control and that's especially true when they go in the kitchen. But in just the last month, I've seen the tide starting to turn and this next product, it doesn't need an app. The app is complimentary. It doesn't need anything but a plug into the wall, but it's truly smart in what it does and I cannot wait for this to extend to other products. So enjoy Chef Maker, which has almost turned me into a chef. We're finally into a world with smart appliances that I think are gonna hit the mark, but I get to find out today. Now, this is called the Drio Chef Maker. So as soon as I open up the box, first of all, you're downloading the Drio app. And uh, the Drio app is pretty good. I've had it with an air purifier. Now I'm actually testing it with a fan as well. Now we've got a pretty good sized user manual. Nothing too crazy here. So you take this probe, if I can ever get it out of the box, and then you're going to put that in your food. Here it is. It has a number of presets that are gonna help you cook. This is intended to just do it for you. And that's why it's called the chef maker. Let's do it. Oh yeah. There is a lot going on. There we go. Okay. So this is like our little, a little cook. Hey, we can see through. Look at that. Settings, favorites, probe cook, classic cook and chef mode. Well, you know, I'd like to be a chef. Very easy navigation to go through here. Classic cook, okay. So they're giving you a bunch of different modes for this. You could do everything from roast to air fry, everything in between. This is like an oven. So it's quite a different device. Plus there's just the chef modes and there's the probe mode. So there you go. Now all they're, all they're doing is they're giving you, okay, whatever temperature you want to get that to, it's going to bring it to that, right? So you've got a little probe that's going to sit in your food in there. So there's a maintenance, water pipe drain, two minutes, and descaling. So because water is going through this system uh, and because it's kind of coming through the top here, they're going to give you some options to drain the water and then descale the unit just in case you're not finding things taste so good. The you know, one thing about Drio and about the Chef Maker here, it has wireless connectivity. So it's waiting to connect to the Drio app. And I've used that app before. It's got great interface for controlling the devices there. It's a really clean application. We're gonna have to try it out with this to see how that helps and how that might hinder. But I'm betting you can prep things and then even when you're out of the home, start your food. So it could be just sitting in here waiting for you. Now, one other thing that I think is pretty exciting is I can watch the food cook. Now that's something I haven't been able to do with the Instant Pot. Uh, even if you have it wirelessly connected to their app, you're not getting any details about what's going on. Uh, the other thing with this is, yeah, my air fryer, I can't see into my air fryer. So I've got to open it or I'm going to be checking on it. Uh, and that's just like an oven. So I'm really enjoying how much like an oven this feels like. You've seen all the pretty buttons, but the real question is, can this turn someone into a chef? Well, I've made everything from salmon to veggies to fries to burgers, and I can see that you can do so much more than I have. The fact is, I just don't know how to use this thing to its full potential yet. But the amazing thing that happened to me on day one was that it raised my potential. Chef Maker was extremely clear with its instructions to me to add water, put in the probe, and then place the salmon all prepared into the device. 
It didn't teach me how to season or give me recipes, so I hope that's something that Drio adds later, but all I had to look up were a few seasonings that worked with my salmon, prep it and place it in the bin, then Drio did the rest. That's because Chef Mode has three things that drive how it works. Number one, when you select the type of food that you'll be making, Chef Maker has a set process that it goes through. In the case of my salmon, it achieves doneness, then it browns the exterior as a second part of the process. Number two, the probe that you insert into the food tells Drio when to stop, so even with the process running, it's making intelligent decisions about your food. And number three, it has an internal temperature, just like other ovens. I look like a genius, and I can't cook. All of this is combined with the interesting addition of water, which in the case of the salmon was being sprayed in small amounts into the oven to keep things really humid in there. All of this was a bit weird to me, but at some point it decided that the salmon was cooked, and honestly, it was cooked to perfection as far as I was concerned. And this happened with everything I've put in Chef Maker. I've not run into something that it can't handle and your only limitation is that you're gonna have only one of these in your home. That's been my biggest problem because I wanted to use it for not only the burgers but then the buns. And you're just gonna end up having to do those things separately if you want everything to time out right. But at the end of the day, my kid has eaten everything that's come out of this. And that's not just a feat of parenting, that's a feat of engineering. That's something that's worth everything to me as a parent, and honestly, at that point, I don't care about the Wi-Fi features or the app. The air fryer mode and the toasting and the broiling modes all work as they should, and this is incredibly easy to clean. In fact, it's the first non-stick surface that I would say is actually non-stick, and the bin is the right size to fit larger meals into it without it being ridiculously heavy. The app has good control of the device, so you can start things after you've walked away, and you'll even get notices that your cook is complete when it's done. Now, Drio will have to expand the list of items in their chef mode library, and we will have to see how it behaves over the long term. But so far, this is 10 times better than an air fryer or my instant pot. It's improved Brian as a father, and more importantly, it's kid approved. All right, automators, that's what I have for this unboxing video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you're here, then I know you enjoy discovering new smart home tech. So I have all the best smart home products that are coming this year in the video right there. And I have all of the best smart home products that came in the last year down here. Go check one of those out. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.